the outer parts of mountain ranges like the Andes are marked by regions where strata have been pushed together, folded and stacked up on top of each other. These are called fold and thrust belts and they've been studied for over a century by generations of geologists. There are examples all over the world. We're going to look at a classic, maybe the classic example of this type of tectonics. But by virtue of new subsurface imagery, we're going to get a new view on these classic structures because they may not be all that they seem. And for many geologists, the archetype is the Jura Hills of northern Switzerland, as interpreted and displayed by this man, August Buxdorf. This is one of his cross sections and we can colour up part of it. He drew this section starting with observations of the geology on the ground at the Earth's surface. But he added subsurface knowledge gained from railway tunnels. And as the tunnel was dug, his interpretation evolved. And to his final version, he added information on the deep structure from the few boreholes it's not just this work which is stunning. Bugstoff investigated how this structure evolved by progressive thrusting and folding as the strata were pushed together. So his cross sections are really insightful and they're an archetype of what's called thin skin tectonics because the deformation is restricted to the sedimentary rocks the older basement rocks upon which they were deposited remain at depth, undeformed. The cover has been pushed, rather like a crumpled tablecloth, across a rigid table of basement. And Buxdorf suggested that this style of tectonics was common to different parts of the Jura Hills that deformed in different ways, but all thin-skinned. OK, so where are we talking about? The Alpine mountain chain and the Jura fold and thrust belt picked out in blue. That's Jurassic aged rocks. They're well ahead, that's north of the main Alpine chain. So on a cross section, the Jura are out here in the north, detached from the underlying basement, linking back to the Alps by a regional slip surface, a thrust detachment. That's thin skin tectonics because the basement doesn't seem to be involved. Detachment occurs because near the base of the sedimentary rocks is a layer of evaporites, salt, a weak rock type that essentially acts as lubricant. So thin skin, but actually basement structures do play a role. Here's an old cross section of mine for the Jura in southeast France and the thrust front is controlled by basement faulting. Here's the salt layer and it's dropped down by basement faults. So the thrust has to climb up and away from the detachment level, limiting the fold and thrust belt. So in cartoons, deformation can continue above a slippery detachment layer. But if this layer is offset, the thrust belt is pinned at the front. This idea has been developed for other areas of the Jura, such as the Mont Terry structure in Switzerland, shown here in evolution. Faults in the basement that predate thrusting, offsetting the salt layer, causing thrust to pile up. This idea of basement structures localizing deformation in the overlying sedimentary cover was explored for Buxdorf's classic fold thrust complex by Hans Laubscher, a great Jura expert. He modified Buxdorf's section a little and proposed that the folds and thrust had localised on inherited what he termed asperities or subtle basement structures. So let's take this idea a little bit further. This cross section by Herfried Madrich shows thrusts localised above inferred older basement faults, so a story of structural inheritance. But let's look more closely. Are these basement faults simply earlier than thrusting? We can restore the thrusting to see first the northern thrust 
which has a displacement of a shade over two and a half kilometers. So if we take back the strata, the southern thrust restores two. So here's its basement step, but this thrust has localized not on the step, but back here. So it's difficult to argue that both basement faults were inherited and localized the thrusts above. And restoration is the key tool to investigate basement involvement. This section by Alexander Maltz shows a similar issue. So let's explore the problem with the cartoon. Here's a basement structure with two deformed zones, one in the north and one in the south. And the question is, does the southern deformation zone localize on a pre-existing basement fault? If the northern deformation happened last, we can restore it and the southern deformed zone restores off its basement step. It wasn't localized by it. So what if the northern deformed zone formed first? Then the southern deformed zone can form at its basement step. But hold on, that requires the detachment surface to have slipped happily over the basement step without localizing deformation above it first. Surely that's a bit odd. We can make this work, but only if the basement step forms later to localize the southern deformation so that detachment can happen across it first. So basement faulting wasn't pre-thrusting, but locally it was here during the thrust sequence, coeval basement and thin skin tectonics. The Jura thrust belt shows different styles of basement control. Pile-ups against probable pre-existing faults that offset the detachment layer. But also, perhaps, if the steps aren't too big, a kind of soft localization of deformation and slip leaking out to the front or basement faulting happening during the thrust attachment, sticking the thrust belt, causing new thrusts behind the once active thrust front. So a range of possibilities. So to conclude this film, we can look at the Eastern Jura. This area is targeted for a site to dispose of Switzerland's radioactive waste and NAGRA, the responsible body, has acquired 3D seismic imagery here. The thrust belt overlies a permacarboniferous basin which we consider part of the basement and Jura thrusting coincides with the margin of this basin. So here's a profile from the 3D seismic volume. Interpretations are aided by well control which links strata to seismic reflections like this. So here's our interpretation. Top basement, which is the base of the trias, the permocarboniferous basin at depth, and mesozoic strata above, and deformed zones with thrusts. One in the north and one in the south. So the full 3D seismic volume permits mapping of the top basement surface seen here in oblique view with steps. These are faults that drop the basement top down towards our viewpoint, that's towards the north. And we can explore the impact of these basement faults on two selected profiles from the 3D volume. Here are the seismic images, and here are their interpretations. The lower profile from the west of the volume shows top basement offsets, but the upper profile apparently shows a smooth top basement surface. So on the upper profile, offsets are insufficient to isolate the detachment salt layer. So the detachment could bypass the basement structure. In contrast, on the lower profile, there's a pile up with curious down cutting stratal patterns as a consequence of thrusts interacting with normal faults. So while basement influence is evident in the lower image, it remains obscure in the top one. But beware, this is just 2D thinking. This is a three-dimensional structure. Folds and thrusts seeded on the larger basement step can propagate laterally into an area where the basement offsets are only small.
So if we construct cross sections in this area, we can't really identify any basement controls. It doesn't look like basement is controlling anything. This discussion shows that there's a requirement for great 3D imagery so that we can make better structural interpretations. But there are very few such seismic surveys available openly for thrust belts from around the world. So we're lucky here. Certainly, seismic surveys like this weren't available to Buxdorf. He was 100 years too soon. Idealised thin skin thrusting interpretations aren't really appropriate then for the Jura. Structural evolution in the full thrust belt was influenced not only by inherited basement structures, but also by basement faults that were active during the thrusting. How many thrust belts around the world are similarly basement influenced? It's an open question. You can find out more in this open access paper we published in the journal Tectonics. Thank you for watching this film from the Shear Zone channel.